We're looking at live action shows. Excellent. We're in, uh, in, right in the, in the late 1960s, early 1970s. Brilliant. Uh, in Dad's first live action series, UFO, there are, I'm sure you will agree, quite a lot of futuristic vehicles. But just one or two, yeah. Well, yeah, Skydiver, for example, uh-huh. uh, and obviously it's attached Sky One or whatever Sky number, uh, yep. Moonbase Interceptors, uh, yep. Airstrikers Car, yep. um, and a weird little personal transport scooter. Oh, okay. You, you may not be familiar with the one, but I'm talking about the single occupant vehicle that cruises the halls of Shadow HQ. Although I always oh. feel weird to say Shadow HQ because that's Supreme Headquarters. Alien Defence Organisation headquarters, but oh, yeah, you, right, you yeah. know exactly what I mean. Now, <laughs> yeah. uh, if you've seen the first episode, Identified, you'll know what I mean instantly. It has four wheels and a, a sleek design and sits low to the floor. Basically, it's a moving chair that travels up and down the corridors at, um, well, walking pace. Great. Uh, right. now, as the series goes on, it is seen less and less frequently, and it's Probably because the idea of a personal transport device like this was a holdover from the Super Mario Nation days, of course, where the puppets couldn't really walk terribly convincingly, um, needed these devices to get around in a way that looked futuristic. Ah, right. Um, right. Obviously, we had hover bikes and uh, jetmobiles and moving walkways (laughs) and all sorts of stuff, anything to avoid them walking. Uh, Mm -hmm. The production team and dad decided to try and experiment with having similar vehicles in UFO, but the results must have been deemed to be unsuitable. Uh, but after all, I suppose that makes sense because the corridors of Shadow didn't exactly have high-speed lanes. So if right. you can't go faster than walking pace in your vehicle, why not just walk, maybe? Uh, yes. I mean, perhaps in some old alternate universe, Shadow was full of high-speed carts clattering around the control room and uh, the break room and back at 100 miles an hour, but we will never know for sure things were in this universe so it was a bit of a kind of an abandoned idea it feels very much a bit like the um oh god what was that awful invention the little kind of personal transport bike thing do you know what i mean from what oh the uh, the uh, oh that's uh, the, uh, the uh, sinclair, no, sinclair no, no. yeah sinclair c5, c5? Yes, yes that's right yeah okay. a, bit, a little bit like that okay yeah feels that that era when we're all sort of oh yes we won't have to put any effort in anymore we'll just yeah. coast around on robotically driven vehicles which are expensive to maintain break down and only go at walking pace yeah. so <laughs> there we go a, a nice idea and i guess they must have got into their heads during the 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 super marination era that these things were kind of a a signifier of of science fiction okay uh, yeah, of living yeah. in the future yeah. uh, did you have any of those in space precinct mm, no i don't think so no i mean any Pointless things in space precinct. I mean, the fact that the top. Well, Blue Hirsch, you mean? Oh, ouch! <laughs> hey, hey, hey. I can only say that because I know for sure he's not listening. Yeah, that's absolutely true. He will never listen to this podcast. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's the, the one thing on, on space precinct was that um, police bike toy, which oh, never yeah. appeared in the series. In the series, did it? that's right. That that's would have right. been cool, but there were no kind of weird, pointless. Um, moving devices no i mean i bet someone somewhere has written a thesis on the thinking behind matching specific vehicles with specific characters from tv series and how much thought goes into that and how they become sort of combined in the public's imagination you know if i would say inspector morse Mm. you think of the jag if i were to say uh, starsky and hutch you think of their old sort of ford granada with the the white flash down the side yeah very true do you know what i mean yeah Uh, doctor who uh, bessie things like that you know, there's a lot of thought there, I think, between how we attach vehicles to certain characters or, or TV shows. Yeah, there. I like it. I, I somehow mm. doubt there is a thesis out there, though, but I, I could right. be wrong. Um, I mean, I've got time on my hands <laughs> if you want a thesis. <laughs> You're, you've got other things to write. Don't, don't do that. I have. Don't get true. distracted. So, uh, Popterons, what did you think of the Shadow Personal Transport device? Hmm. Any good? Pointless? Hmm. Glad they ditched it. Wish they'd done more with it. Wish they were racing around the ceilings like kind of crazy ski lifts around Shadow HQ or just Shadow Mm -hmm. Uh, let us know podcast at jerryanderson.com and if you know of a thesis out there there where we do cover the links between characters and their vehicles do also email us that but I yes I I suspect it doesn't exist if you do I want to see the word thesis in big capital letters followed by two exclamation marks in the subject line 